Welcome back to Any Recapped. Today we will cover the series Peach Boy Riverside. Let's begin. In an unknown forest, a blonde-haired girl named Sally happens upon a starving harefolk. She decides to help her and feeds her a carrot, which makes the harefolk grateful. She introduces herself as Frau and decides to accompany Sally so she can repay the carrot debt. The two of them arrive at a small village soon thereafter, but Frau is quickly discriminated against, as humans do not want to accept a demi-human among them. Despite Sally sticking up for Frau, she is not welcome. Not wanting to abandon Frau, Sally decides to sneak back into the village after getting a disguise to cover up Frau's nature. The disguise works and they make it inside, where they happen upon the village chief. He invites them to stay in his residence as travelers are held in high regard due to one such traveler saving the village from monsters not too long ago. Questioning why demi-humans are discriminated against, Sally is told about their savage and mindless nature, making them no different than monsters. Although she knows that Frau is nothing like that, it becomes clear to her that she will not be able to change the minds of people about Frau that easily. In the morning, she is woken up by loud screams coming from the village. Looking for the reason behind those screams, she sees a large monster attacking the village. However, it is no ordinary monster as it has large horns growing from its head, identifying it to be a far more dangerous foe, an ogre. At that moment, Sally gets overwhelmed by a strange feeling from within her chest, zoning out and walking in front of the ogre. Suddenly, she snaps out of it and gets scared, wondering why she is standing in front of the monster. Before the ogre can attack, Frau dashes to Sally's rescue and protects her by beating it up, revealing to be a demi-human in disguise. Seeing that a demi-human defeated the ogre only serves to upset the villagers further, as they are now concerned about Frau's power. Despite that, Frau approaches the village chief and thanks him for the hospitality, before leaving with Sally. They do not get far as a patrol of soldiers apprehends them, taking them to the kingdom of Rimdarl and throwing them into the dungeons. The person in charge of them apologizes for the harsh treatment, but states that it was necessary as there is a demi-human in question. He introduces himself as Hawthorne, the commander of the royal knights, and lets them out of the cell, declaring that he will take responsibility for them. It becomes evident that Hawthorne does not share any bad prejudice towards Frau, as he has seen Frau defend the village from the ogre. However, Sally is upset about the treatment the demi-humans are getting, so she leverages his good nature to get him to treat them to a meal as well. While the three of them are walking through the market, they run into a few kids, who tease Hawthorne that he finally got himself a girlfriend. A moment later, Sally is left speechless from shock as a massive blast wave runs through the city, killing the kids right in front of her, as well as countless other people. It turns out that two ogres are behind this attack, namely the High Ogre of the East, Meki, and the Walrus Ogre of the North, Set. Since Meki fired her cannon to start the attack, she shrinks until her power recharges. Because of that, Set goes ahead and enters the city, killing any humans that get in his way. Sally zones out once more, with a strange glow coming from her eyes. Hawthorne attempts to stop her, but she just keeps walking towards the ogre. At that moment, Fraun jumps in and attacks Set, snapping Sally out of it. Thanks to that, Hawthorne is able to take her away while Fraun buys time for them to escape. Set is impressed by Fraun's noble determination to protect the humans, so once it becomes evident that Fraun cannot win, he offers to let her flee. But Fraun refuses and remains determined to slow them down as much as possible. Sally does not want to leave Fra behind, so she breaks off from Hawthorne and returns to Fra's side. Just in time to see Fra lose to the powerful Ogre. Once again, the strange feeling within her surges as she stands in front of Set. The glow in her eyes intensifies and a peach-like mark becomes visible in her right eye as her power awakens and she easily deflects Set's attack, blowing off his entire arm in the process. Looking at her own hands, Sally loses herself in the euphoria of the feeling that is taking her over, with a creepy smile appearing on her face at the same time. Meanwhile, Meki is resting outside of the city, waiting for her powers to return. It is then that a boy with long, purple hair approaches her. He immediately identifies her to be the one behind the attack, and after showing her his skill with the sword, states how fighting her in her weakened state would be no fun. Because of that, he decides to give her enough time for her powers to return. Meki quickly realizes that he must be the powerful monster slayer who they got warned about and wonders why he is going out of his way to hunt down monsters, stating how she is only going after humans because they keep destroying nature with their expansion. The boy dismisses her statement with a laugh, declaring that she just wants revenge, which is exactly what he wants as well, and soon enough their fight begins. On the other hand, Set realizes he is unable to overpower Sally, so he gives it his all to blast her away with his own cannon. This alerts Meki that another powerful foe is in the city, but she is unable to go help Set, as the purple-haired boy is easily overpowering her. 
As it turns out, the cannon that set fire against Sally did not manage to harm her at all, and she protected Fra from the blast as well. Menke is taunted by the purple-haired boy to fire her cannon at him, and to make sure she does not miss he even pins himself to the ground. But her devastating cannon does absolutely nothing to him, and having fired it, her power wanes, causing her to shrink into a childlike form once more. Sally brings the fight and set to an end with a single decisive blow. Seeing that she is about to die, Meki asks the purple-haired boy for his name. It is then that he introduces himself as Mikoto, the sworn enemy of all ogres. But seeing her in this state triggers a flashback in Mikoto, and he decides to spare Meki's life, but not before taking out her sources of power in the eye and the horn. A talking dog Mikoto is familiar with comes up to him and questions him on the reason for letting the ogre live. Mikoto states that she will now be rejected by both ogres and humans, and that will be the right punishment for her. The two of them immediately leave towards their next destination, with Mikoto being unwilling to make contact with Sally, who he seems to be familiar with. Sally ends up fainting after delivering the finishing blow to Set, and it takes her some time to come back to her senses. She is relieved to see that Fra is doing okay, but she cannot remember anything that happened after her power awakened. Hawthorne tells her how she took out the ogre, and although surprised, Sally realizes that it must be true as both she and Fra are suddenly praised as heroes. Hawthorne brings her to the dungeons where they have confined the unconscious Meki. Although she appears human now, there are villagers who have seen her use her cannon ability. It turns out that Hawthorne is using his authority to stop them from killing her in her sleep, and he is hoping that Sally and Fra could figure out a Meki is truly an ogre. As soon as Hawthorne leaves, Fra reveals that Meki is only pretending to be asleep. Realizing that the gig is up, Meki gets up and declares that she is indeed an ogre. Intending to kill Sally and Fra, she attacks but quickly realizes that her powers are completely gone, revealing to them that a human named Mikoto is responsible for what happened to her. Sally finds Meki's tantrum endearing and upon getting information on Mikoto from her, decides to help her out and break her free from the dungeons so she would not get executed by the guards. Meki contemplates letting them execute her, as she is upset for no longer being an ogre. Upon hearing that Sally decides to save her by force, breaking her out of the dungeon and escaping from the city, the news reach Hawthorne and he rushes to intercept them. Catching up with them at the city gates, he tries to convince Sally to turn back. Just at that moment, a massive blast completely obliterates the entire city, destroying the kingdom of Rimdarl in the blink of an eye, only sparing the four of them who were outside of the gates. Jump forward in time and the four of them are in Barkwind, where Hawthorne is participating in the martial arts tournament to win the grand prize. Meki, who now goes by the name Carrot, is less hostile than before and is even contemplating the existence of the human heart. Suddenly, Sally spots Mikoto and chases after him. He is surprised to see her again and the two of them get to catch up. He explains that he is also here for the tournament, as he needs the monetary reward because of his gluttonous companion, Milia. She is also participating in the tournament, which makes her lament the loss of her ogre powers. In a secret location, a large amount of powerful ogres are having an important meeting. The one who summoned them, Sumeraji, shows them how the area which ogres hold under control has shrunk because of the one known as the Peach Boy. While most ogres do not know who he is and want to fight him, one elderly ogre quickly discourages them, stating how winning against him is impossible. Their talk upsets a high ogre with the appearance of a little boy named Todoroki. Sumereji tells him how the Peach Boy also killed the ogre he was in love with, Meki, which sends Todoroki into a frenzy, and he declares that he will kill the Peach Boy on his own. After Todoroki leaves, Sumeraji states how he believes that the only way forward is for ogres and humans to get along, stating how even love between humans and ogres is possible. This intrigues a very powerful ogre, Jusarino, who has the appearance of a little girl. In Barkwen, Jusarino ends up running into Hawthorne and gets him to help her search for Sumeraji. Despite introducing herself as the god of masks, Jusarino is not taken seriously by Hawthorne, who thinks it is just a child fantasy. She gets interested in him and wants to shower him with riches if he becomes her friend. However, this only makes Hawthorne lecture her, as one cannot buy true friendship. The fact that a human lectured her gets Jusarino even more interested in Hawthorne, but before she can do anything else they run into Sumeraji, who pretends to be a local pastor. Seeing that the two of them are getting along, Sumeraji suggests that Jusarino should watch the tournament he is participating in and cheer him on. Jusarino is happy to do so and they part ways with Hawthorne returning to the arena. Sumeraji thinks back how Hawthorne is a former knight from Rimdarl, the kingdom that got destroyed by a minion of Jusirian, and finds that to be very amusing. Just as Hawthorne's next match is about to start, Sumeraji runs into Sally at the entrance of the arena. As it happens, Mikoto runs into them as well, revealing that Sumeraji is a dangerous ogre and their enemy. 
However, Sumeriji declares that he wants to make sure humans and ogres can coexist, and in that endeavor he would like to have Sally join him. On the other hand, Makoto declares how that cannot happen, and he is sworn to exterminate every single ogre from the face of the world. Also turning to Sally, Makoto asks her to join him on his quest. Sally finds herself torn between two difficult choices, wondering what to do before Sally set out on her journey. She was the princess of a distant and peaceful kingdom. It is there that she happened upon Makoto for the first time. He helps her hide from the royal guards and the two of them spend the day hanging out together. Interested to hear about his journey, she invites him back to the palace. Since she finds her life to be very boring, Sally wants to head out on a journey of her own, so she asks Makoto to take her with him when he leaves. However, he states how she would be placing her life on the line if she were to come along. This shakes Sally's confidence and she becomes unsure if she wants to go after all. Suddenly, an elderly ogre comes before Sally's father, the king, declaring how he has come to take his kingdom. The ogre gives him an ultimatum, stating how he will need to bring him human sacrifices every month if he does not want for the kingdom to be destroyed. The ogre spots Makoto on his way out and recognizes him, immediately running away and telling his comrades that there is a change of plans. But Mikoto has also noticed the ogre, and with a creepy grin he chases after him mumbling to himself how he has finally found him. At the entrance to the city, Mikoto catches up with the ogre, confronting him and his allies. Sally gets worried about Mikoto going to face the ogres on his own, so she comes to get him. But her worry is misplaced, as Mikoto showcases the extent of his power. Without mercy or hesitation, Mikoto cuts through the group of ogres, killing all of them in record time. Witnessing his performance firsthand, Sally wonders why a hero that just saved her kingdom looks so terrifying. Makoto's talking dog companion joins him and the two of them head out onto another journey. Realizing that he is leaving, Sally quickly rushes after to join him, but upon taking a closer look at all the ogre bodies, she gets sick to her stomach. It takes her some time to get over what she saw, but eventually she steals her mind and even cuts her hair to show her determination to her father. Deciding that it is time for her to go on a journey and see the world, even though her father is worried about her, he does not stop her and instead wishes her all the best on her travels. While Sally, Frau, Hawthorne, and Kara were traveling together, they came upon a town that is being plagued by a vampire. The discrimination against demi-humans is very much present there, so they have to separate from Frau and booking a room for the night to avoid trouble. Kara is appalled by how the villagers are treating Frau even more so when Sally chooses to not use her power to teach them a lesson. Deciding to keep Fra company, Carrot goes with her and learns that Fra is used to this kind of treatment by humans. This makes Carrot extremely angry and she seeks out the local vampire, who turns out to be another high ogre with the name Kyukatsuki. She requests of him to slaughter all of the humans living in this town, but he refuses to do her bidding and insists she should do it herself. Carrot then reveals that she lost her powers as an ogre, so she is unable to do so. Surprised by the fact, Kyukatsuki inquires more and learns from her that Sally has powers that make her dangerous to all of the ogres. Thus, he decides to go after Sally instead, insisting that Carrot should do the same if she still wants to call herself an ogre. Just as she is about to break under pressure, Fra appears. She was looking for Carrot, and once she hears that Kyukatsuki wants to go kill Sally, she stands in his way. It turns out the brave hair folk is not able to put up a fight against the high ogre, and despite Carrot asking him to not kill her, he does just that, blasting the top part of her body away with his cannon. Sally, who's fallen the burning sensation inside of her, manages to find them just in time to see Fra getting killed. This enrages her, and she attacks Kyukatsuki. Surprised by her power, Kyukatsuki realizes he cannot face her head on, so he uses his blood manipulation to tie her clothes into place, preventing her from moving. Just as he is getting ready to blow Sally away with his cannon, Carrot screams and begs of him to not kill her, as she is her comrade, despite the fact that she is human. This seems to resonate with Kyukatsuki, and his expression changes, but instead of letting them go, he decides to send both of them together into the afterlife. Meanwhile, Frau finds herself in heaven, where an angel named Atla greets her. Atla seems to be friends with Frau and she wonders why Frau died yet again. After explaining the situation to Atla, Frau requests to be revived once more, stating how this time, she will have to use some of her true power. Although not approving of it, Atla does not stop her, and instead sends her back, warning her to not overdo it as her body and spirit will not endure the use of that power. Fra thanks her and suddenly gets back on her feet in front of Sally and Carrot. With her true power unleashed, her eyes turn red and demon-like wings sprout from her back. With ease, she overpowers Kyukatsuka's blood manipulation, and without wasting a single moment, she strikes at his heart. After that, Fra feigns from overexerting herself while Kyukatsuki makes peace with the fact that he is dying. He tells Carrot how he was just like her, and he ended up falling in love with a human. 
However, one night as he proposed to her, he lost control over his nature as an ogre and killed her. Because of that, he finds Carrot to be the lucky one, as losing her ogre powers also removed the danger of her ogre nature taking over. Just as Sally and Carrot are leaving carrying Fra away, he makes peace with his death, hoping that Carrot does not turn out like him. After regaining her senses, Fra finds herself back in the in-room, with only Adla by her side. Adla reprimands her for using too much of her power and helps her out by sealing away once more, making the intense red glow disappear from Fra's eyes together with her black wings. Before leaving, she states how Frau has good companions, as they did not change their opinion of her after they saw her in that form. Meanwhile, Sally and Carrot are shopping for some carrots, knowing that eating them also helps Frau recover. Along the way, they run into a merchant who discriminated against Frau the other day in front of Carrot. Hearing his words makes Sally furious, and she punches him straight into the face. This makes Carrot happy, as she realizes that Sally will stick up for her companions no matter what. Returning to the in-room, they are relieved to see Frau doing better. Although curious about the power she used, it is clear that Fra does not want to talk about it, so they do not pressure her. Instead, they decide to move out of the town as quickly as possible, as Sally has stirred up some trouble by assaulting the merchant. During that time, Mikoto is traveling with his dog through a thick forest. They notice someone stalking them, and once Mikoto gets ready to take out the stalker, he realizes that the person in question is a young nun. Noticing that she is lost and hungry, he makes camp and feeds her, wondering what she is doing out in the woods all by herself. She reveals that she only knows her name, which is Milia, and she has no other memories of her past. Once she falls asleep, Mikoto exposes her hidden, broken horn, revealing that she is in fact an ogre. Deciding to kill her in her sleep, his dog steps in and stops him, stating how right now she is nothing but a girl without memories, and if he is going to use the given family name, then he should do his best to not disgrace it. This triggers Mikoto to remember something, and he quickly changes his mind about killing her, apologizing to the dog and deciding to bring the girl to the nearest settlement. On their way, they get attacked by another ogre, who seems to be after Milia, calling her by her ogre name, Hatsuki. This triggers her memories to return, and she remembers her fight against Sally in front of a tree-high ogre, Juki. With her memories restored, she tries to fight the ogre who is after her, but her broken horn does not allow her to get enough power, and she gets cut down. Mikoto declares how now that she has her memories back, she is just another ogre to him, and he will kill the survivor of their match. Seeing no other way out of her predicament, Milia uses the remainder of her power to rip out the broken piece of her horn, stripping herself of all of her ogre powers. While bleeding out, she asks Mikoto to protect her now that she is no longer an ogre. Touched by her determination, Mikoto decides to help her, even giving a chance for the other ogre to escape so he could tend to Milia's serious injury as quickly as possible. Once regaining her senses, she thanks Mikoto for saving her and declares that she will travel with him from now on. On the day when Rimdarl was destroyed, the over responsible for it, Semenki, attacks Sally and her group, declaring how Meki should die as well, considering that she is no longer an ogre. But just as he is about to strike Sally, Sumeraj contacts him and orders him to stand down. Although confused, Semenki follows his orders and retreats, with Hawthorne being completely zoned out from the shock of his kingdom disappearing in front of his eyes, Sally has to snap him out of it. Since they are lost and without food, Meki decides to guide them to the nearest town. However, upon arriving there, they are immediately subjected to persecution due to Fra, a demhuman, being with them. Luckily, Hawthorne is well known in this area, so he is able to leverage his status to get the villagers to accommodate them. It is there that Fra also suggests to Meki that she should travel with Sally as well, seeing that she has no place to go after losing her ogre powers. Not being able to use her ogre name any longer, Fra gives Meki a new name, Carrot, which she ends up liking. By chance, Sally crosses paths with Mikoto at long last in the same village. The two of them catch up, and Sally brings up what she learned so far on her journey, wondering why there is so much prejudice and hatred. Mikoto tells her his opinion on those things, stating how some have a valid reason for hatred, based on vengeance, but most people do not and are simply being taught how to act towards demihumans as a part of their upbringing. Sally is upset at that and tells Mikoto how she has already seen different species being able to understand and work together with each other. After Mikoto says that she might be the only human who sees things that way, Sally realizes that this is something only she can do and declares that she will travel the world and try to find compromise between the species. She even asks Mikoto to join her on the journey, but he refuses. After they part ways, Mikoto reveals to his dog that Sally has become strong and he has to go before she manages to convince him to follow her path. In the town, Hawthorne runs into one of his former soldier comrades, Barrett. After bringing him back to their room, they learn that Barrett was saved by a witch who happened to be where he kept watch and teleported him out of the kingdom just before it got destroyed. 
Hawthorne figures it has to be the Witch of the Western Forest, which intrigues Sally, who wants to go visit the witch next so she could learn magic. During the night, Kara is approached by Sumeraji, who wants her to spy on Sally and give him regular reports on what she does. Faced with the decision between Sumeraji and his idea of coexistence between ogres and humans and Makoto's desire to slay all ogres, Sally chooses to side with Makoto and find a way to talk him out of it. This choice surprises and scares Makoto, who runs away from her. Despite not being chosen, Sumeraji wishes to Sally good luck as she chases after Makoto. Once she catches up with him, he apologizes for forcing her to choose on the spot like that, stating how his hatred for ogres will not disappear until all of them are dead. Sally wonders what he would do if she stood against him while trying to find harmony between ogres and humans. Even though Makoto has a creepy smile on his face, he does not get a chance to answer as Todoroki attacks the town looking for Peach Boy. Accompanied by powerful ogres, Shinki, Basu, and Dominki. They leave Dominki at the entrance while the three of them enter the town, deciding to cause as much commotion as necessary to drive out the Peach Boy. Mikoto uses the commotion to slip away from Sally. The ogre attack cancels the tournament in which Hawthorne is taking part, so he joins the Solitaires to help fight the ogres instead. As it happens, he runs into Todoroki, who confuses him for the Peach Boy. Despite not having any special powers, Hawthorne is a very skilled fighter, and he is able to survive Todoroki's assault for the time being. On the way out of the town, Mikoto runs into Deminki, who is sleeping on the ground. Deciding he will kill him anyway, Mikoto suddenly falls victim to his unique power and is put to sleep. Rushing to Hawthorne's side, Sally gets intercepted by Sumeraji, who decides to put their dedication to her cause to the test by blocking her path. Fra is also trying to reach Hawthorne, but she gets stopped by the flying ogre Basu. At the same time, Carrot is going for Shinki, as she knows him and will try to convince him to stop. Surprisingly, Hawthorne is able to trick Tiviroki and strike him down with a wooden sword. Carrot finds Shinki and learns that it was Sumeraji who told them that she got slain by the Peach Boy, which sent Tiviroki into a revenge-driven frenzy. And to make sure things remain this way, he will kill her now. Hawthorne's strike is not enough to knock out Todoroki, and he becomes even more furious at Hawthorne for using cheap tricks in combat. For some reason, Sally is unable to activate her overslaying powers against Sumeraji, which renders her helpless in the fight. Fra and Carrot are not faring any better in their fights. Carrot is getting toyed with, while Fra gets blasted away once again. Realizing that he will not be able to survive Todoroki's next technique, Hawthorne takes it head-on, making peace with the fact that he will die. But at that moment, a witch appears between them and blocks Todoroki's attack. Hawthorne is shocked to see her, but recognizes her to be Winnie. The legend of the Peach Boy starts a long time ago in a faraway land. After he was found as a baby inside a peach that was floating down the river, he was brought up by a kind older couple. Upon reaching maturity, he set out on a journey to find his real parents, and as a parting gift, they have given him a sword, so he could protect himself in the dangerous world. On his journey, he first meets a talking dog, who decides to join him because he was kind enough to feed him and not run away in fear once he heard him talk. Suddenly, the town they are traveling through gets attacked by an ogre. Peach Boy stands in front of the ogre, and despite the pleas of his dog companion, he is determined to not abandon the helpless villagers who are getting slaughtered. Introducing himself as Heiko, he not only manages to block the ogre's attack, but easily cuts him in half. This awakens his ogre-slaying powers and peach-shaped marks appear in his eyes. From that moment on, the legend of the Peach Boy spreads and he keeps getting asked to slay ogres all over the land. One day, he sets out to take out the ogre's base on Ogre Island. After cutting his way through countless ogres, he duels their leader and beats him. Just like agreed upon, the defeated leader of the ogres promises to leave these lands for good, but also warns him that his defeat means how the Kishin will come. Because of that, Hiko secluded himself and decided to live in the mountains, so that he would not drag others into trouble when the Kishin comes after him. One day, an ogre who closely resembles a human comes to him and tells him how he managed to live happily among the humans, even having a wife and child. But he lost control of his ogre instincts and devoured his wife, so he begs Hiko to kill him before he ends up devouring his child as well. After putting him out of his misery, Heko goes to the nearby town to check up on the ogre's child. He arrives just in time to see the villagers abuse the boy because he has begun growing a horn on his head. The boy's spirit is completely broken and he starts apologizing for existing. Hearing that makes Heko angry beyond belief and he decides to take in the little boy and raise him on his own. Noticing how depressed the boy is, Heiko reveals that he is the one who killed his father, so if he wants to exact revenge he can kill him any time. However, the boy is not strong enough to kill him, so Hiko tells him to grow strong and nurture his hatred of him until he becomes strong enough to kill him, promising that he will teach him how to fight. 
It turns out that the boy is none other than Makoto, and one night he overhears Heiko talking with the dog about his circumstances, learning why Heiko killed his father. Time passes on, and Mikoto gets very close to Hiko, learning a lot from him. But one day, the kitchen comes. Although Hiko sends Mikoto away so he would be safe, Mikoto realizes what is going on and rushes to Heiko's side. He finds him on the brink of death, as the kitchen was too much for Hiko to handle. Seeing Mikoto crying, Hiko tells him to always put on a brave smile, even if things are bad, and he will make sure to protect him. Then he entrusts his sword to him, and with his final breath, the powers to slay Oberu's transfer from Hiko into Mikoto. Kishin fires his cannon at the two of them, wanting to completely erase Hiko from existence, but his power has no effect on Mikoto. The circumstances have made both his overpowers as well as the overslaying powers he got from Hiko awaken. Grabbing Hiko's sword, he apologizes to him, stating how he is not a good boy and he will not rest until he has wiped up all of the ogres from the world. Then he proceeds to cut down the Kishin and tear off his own horn, displaying just how much he hates the ogre part of himself. Regretting that he never got to tell Heiko how much he loves him, Mikoto sets out on his ogre-slaying journey. The dog decides to accompany him next, stating how the boy is left with a huge hole in his heart and no amount of ogre-slaying will ever be able to fill it, because what he truly needs is someone who can be at his side. Winnie, who appeared all of a sudden and saved Hawthorne, introduces herself to Todoroki as the Witch of the Western Forest. However, she is not here to fight the ogres, instead she hands over a powerful magical sword to Hawthorne because she saw him fighting for dear life with a wooden one. She explains that the sword is extremely powerful and can cut through anything its wielder desires. With her part done, she sits behind and lets Hawthorne fight it out with Todoroki. Frau manages to get back on her feet thanks to the residual powers Atla left inside of her and by activating them she is able to take down Basu, but she is too exhausted to come and help Hawthorne in his fight. Meanwhile, Carrot manages to set a trap for Shinki, and despite only having minor powers left, she brings the ogre down. On the other hand, Sumereji suddenly stops fighting against Sally, stating how it was only a test of her conviction, so she should rush to Hawthorne if she wants to save him. She runs off, but not before reaching out to Sumeraji and promising to help him with the coexistence of humans and ogres once she figures out what to do with Mikoto. Despite Todoroki giving it his all, he cannot defeat Hawthorne, who is able to use the magical sword to even cut through the ogre's powers. Remembering how much Meki meant to him, Todoroki unleashes all of his powers and bets everything on an all-out attack. But even that is not enough to stand against the skilled Hawthorne and his new magical sword and Todoroki gets cut down. However, since Hawthorne realized that Todoroki was acting the way he did because of a misunderstanding, he chose to go easy on him and did not kill him with the finishing blow. Instead, Todoroki wakes up in an in-room, where he is pleasantly surprised to see Meki again, wondering why they call her Carrot. They clear up the misunderstanding, and despite the fact that there were both ogre and human victims in this attack, Sally manages to convince them to look past this and focus on the future. Winnie then points out their next destination, which is a kingdom in the east where discrimination between species is outlawed. Makoto wakes up in his own room where he was brought by Milia. Still caught up in his nightmare and he gets ready to cut her down, but the dog snaps him out of it. Despite this, Milia is not upset, stating how she knows that those caught up in Dominka's nightmares have a rough time after waking up. Sally and Todoroki manage to reach an understanding thanks to Frost's wise words, but Todoroki refuses to join hands with her, and instead insists on pursuing a peaceful coexistence on his own. They part ways, but as soon as Todoroki leaves the town, he is ambushed by Sumeraji, who disarmingly approaches him before suddenly attacking from behind, killing him on the spot. After hearing Sally's request to visit the witch, Hawthorne brings her, Fra, Carrot, and Barrett to Winnie's home. Winnie reveals that she has been keeping a close eye on all of them, but despite that, she gets surprised when Sally suddenly asks her to teach her how to use magic. While Winnie does not object to teaching her magic, she asks for all of the money they currently have on them to do so. Despite Sally being okay with that, Hawthorne refuses to go along with it, as they are barely making do with what they have. Because of that, Sally instead asks Hawthorne to teach her how to properly use a sword. After a hard day of training, Frog gets some alone time with Winnie, revealing that the two of them are old friends. Using that chance, Frog asks her to help Sally out with magic. Seeing that Frog cares a lot about Sally, Winnie agrees. The next day, she tells Sally that she will teach her magic, but she will still owe her a lot of money which she can pay at a later date. To start off, Winnie makes Sally build up her stamina so she could endure the strain of using magic. While Sally is training with Hawthorne, Winnie remembers the old days when Hawthorne's grandfather trained her in the same way. The moment is cut short by the sudden arrival of the leaders of elves and lizard folk. They demand from Winnie to undo the seal on the ogre in the forest so they could kill it. 
Winnie agrees to it as long as Sally and her group participate in fighting the ogre as well. While Winnie is preparing to undo the seal, Hawthorne realizes that the elves are hiding most of their troops in a safe distance, so he reasons that they want to save them until all of the lizard folk have been wiped out. Much to Sally's surprise, the leader of the elves does not dispute that fact, explaining how they are mortal enemies with each other, so he is naturally acting in the best interest of his kind. Just as Sally is about to speak, he is cut short by an ogre dressed like a nun appearing from the forest. It is Hatsuki, before she gave up her ogre powers and became Milia. Hatsuki recognizes Meki, and upon hearing that she has lost her ogre powers and became known as Carrot, decides that she will set her free from her pitiful existence. A fight breaks out, and Winnie notices that the sealed ogre has already been set free by Hatsuki, as it suddenly appears in its massive tree form. The developing situation is observed by Sumeraji and Jusarino's minion, Sumenki, but just as they turn to leave, they run into Mikoto. Not recognizing who he is, Sumeraji allows Sumenki to go after him and eat him. Without wasting a single moment, Mikoto cuts off Sumenki's head, making Sumeraji realize just who he is. In the forest, the elves and lizard folk decide to work together properly in face of the new threat. Seeing that inspires Sally and she declares that all of them present, including the ogres, will find a compromise and make peace. This does not sit well with the tree ogre Juki, and he decides to mock her, revealing that the ogres are created out of human hatred, which makes it impossible for them to ever get along. Despite hearing that, Sally does not waver and insists that they can find common ground by talking things through. Mikoto gets surprised by Sumeragi's calm composure, even more so when Sumeragi tells him his name. Recognizing the name, Mikoto gets fired up, but it seems as if Sumeragi is too strong for him to handle. Despite appearing stronger, Sumeragi declares that he would prefer not to fight, as blood sport is not something he likes to partake in. Instead, he would like to offer a way for their two kinds to coexist. Meanwhile, Juki gets surprised when Sally activates her powers, revealing the peach mark in her right eye. At first, Winnie is worried about Sally. But this time around, Sally is in full control of her power and consciousness while using it. Juki mocks her once more that she preaches about peace and coexistence when having the power to wipe out ogres. Not knowing anything about her unique powers, Sally asks him what he knows and he tells her that the peach mark is an opposing force to the hatred that creates ogres. Learning that Sally decides to order them to make peace, and if they refuse, she will exterminate them herself. Hatsuki gets tired of waiting on the sidelines and attacks her, but Sally brings her down with one punch. Juki decides to finish off Hatsuki as she is getting on his nerves, continuing his rant about the impossibility of peace. This pushes Sally's buttons, and after protecting Hatsuki from the finishing blow, she figures that he is one of those with whom she will never be able to reach a compromise. Without any hesitation, she charges at him, and with one punch infused with her overslaying power, she completely obliterates the entire giant tree. Exerting herself to that extent makes her tired, so she collapses in Winnie's arms. Using the commotion to her advantage, injured and terrified Hatsuki escapes into the forest. Later on, Carrot reports to Sumeraji on what Sally did, just as she was told to do. It turns out that Sumeraji and Mikoto parted ways on peaceful terms, much to the dog's surprise. Mikoto states that despite doing this, he does not trust Sumeraji, but he does trust Sally, and since she was trying to achieve the same thing, he let the ogre be. After waking up, Sally sees that both elves and lizard folk have started getting along better as a result of the recent battle. Winnie encourages her to keep striving to create more results like this one. Although happy with the results here, Sally decides she will not stay any longer to learn magic, as she believes that the last few ogres which showed up have come because of her. Being unable to shake the feeling that someone is aware of her powers and is trying to test her, she does not want to bring trouble to Winnie and the others, so she tells them that she is leaving immediately. Despite the danger of ogres, Hawthorne, Frau, and Carrot still insist that they will come along with her, as they are all companions now. Overjoyed by their answer, Sally sets out with them towards their next destination, leaving behind only Barrett, who chose to stay with Winnie and help her out instead. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Make sure to subscribe and like for more content. You've been fantastic. See you in the next video.